Welcome back, good people of the interwebs. Now, back in the days, I used to make videos on how feminism was stupid and yada yada blah blah blah. But, for more than a year, I haven't really. Now, obviously, this is because of uh, the lies that are being pushed all over us, like Corona and the, the rubbish of the American election. And whilst I'm recording this, I know that shit is going down in, in Washington, and I can only hope it doesn't get too messy. Uh, not, not anyone I know would have foreseen this, but at the same time, I'm not really surprised, but that's not what we're going to talk about. No, no, we're going to talk about feminism. What about it? Well, I've got a beauty for you. This, 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 this woman will explain to you why she thinks feminism is... No, she doesn't really explain anything, really. But, um, well, let's listen to her anyway. I want you to take a moment to think about the women that have inspired you in your life. If you want to think back about the people that inspired you, I'd advise you to take more than a moment. And just like every person out there, there are males and females that inspired you. Uh, on different fronts, obviously. I mean, I've never had a woman inspire me to become a firefighter, for example. But I used to have a colleague that also was a firefighter. And he inspired me a bit. Mind you, not enough. I never became a firefighter. but both men and women will have inspirational influences on us to pretend that it's only something men do but if you think about it you might know a few women as well kind of shows you the emptiness of the rhetoric because i can't even begin to name all the women that inspired me out of the sheer number of them. And I talk against feminism, so obviously I must hate women, right? I've always been surrounded by strong women. My mother and aunties are almost all under 5'3", but they have this quality where they seem larger than life because of the way they always stand up for themselves and their beliefs. I have no problem believing that. There are plenty of strong women out there. But then... There are plenty of strong women out there that are vehemently against feminism. What does that tell you? We all get this from my granny, who we affectionately call Pufferfish, because she's absolutely tiny, but she's the most terrifying person to argue with. Maybe you should have thought a little bit longer before you did the speech. Because let's be honest, how is Pufferfish meant as a compliment? Even in the way you describe it, that's not a positive thing. You shouldn't be scared to discuss with someone. You should be willing. You should be able to learn. You should feel safe discussing with them. It might not always be true, but especially for grandparents, you shouldn't compare them to, well, puffer fish. I was always raised to believe that I could be anything. And I never felt held back because of my gender. Well, I think it's a good thing that parents inspire their children to reach for the stars, so to speak. I do feel that your parents have failed in one aspect. You are a woman. Therefore, you have a sex. Male and female are sexes. Gender is a linguistic tool. Words have gender. Objects have gender. People have sex. Eh, but then again, I see how this could be misinstrued. I mean, it's all about gender nowadays, and you must be an intersectionalist, right? This is because of those great women I grew up around, and because of the activists that paved the way for my generation. I guess it's those very activists that cause you to use the term gender when talking about your sex. Your grandmother probably wouldn't agree with it. Well, probably because who knows. But using the term gender to describe sex 
comes from, well, basically feminist theory, and a professor who started using it in the 1970s, kind of pushing it forward as the new norm. But then again, feminism, as most postmodernistic ideologies, strive on changing language to say things that they don't really want to say. So we shouldn't be too surprised, I guess. And to them, I'm endlessly grateful. And this, in a way, scares me. Because by embracing gender, you're actively creating the idea of you being an object rather than a person. But I've heard a worrying comment lately. I've heard people who say, feminism was great, but we don't need it anymore. I think I find this so deeply upsetting because I know that a few years ago, I would have been one of the women saying this. I would say we never needed feminism to begin with, but that's just me. You, at one point, realized that we didn't need feminism anymore. So I'm curious, what changed your mind? Did you realize that you can earn more money promoting feminism as a woman than speaking against it? Is that it? You see, I've barely faced discrimination in my life, but I'm incredibly privileged. I'm a white, cis, middle-class woman, and this all shapes how the world views and treats me. The younger me thought that feminism had done its job when I didn't feel discriminated against based on my gender. But I now know that feminism can only have done its job when no woman is discriminated against for any reason. And there you see feminism moving its goalpost, because for any reason, never be discriminated. If I were to meet you on the street, my dear, wearing the dress that you wear, I would probably think there's something not quite right in your head. Then again, I've been working in psychiatry too often to see borderliners dressed like that. So maybe I'm wrong on this. But then again, you could consider that discrimination. And therefore, I should not have looked at your clothing. That's just one of the many ways people can discriminate. So how far are we going to go? But yeah, once again, I guess you're an intersectionalist then. Between thinking that feminism had done its job and now, I learned of great women, inspirational women, like Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans woman who threw the first brick at Stonewall. Yep, an intersectionalist. You do know that... A trans woman doesn't have a womanly cell in its trans womanly body, right? Other than some altered surgical appearances, the person is still biologically male. So all we need to become woman is claim we are a woman. And in the case of the example you give, I don't even know if this person is post-op or not. So just mentioning that you're a woman means you're a woman. Doesn't that make womanhood rather thin? If all you need to join the club is say, I'm part of the club, that's one club with lax standards, isn't it? Eva Gorbuth who fought against the homophobia and classism in the suffrage movement. Helen Keller, who fought against ableism and the use of nuclear weapons. Women who all highlight an incredibly important term. Yeah, the story of Helen Keller is indeed inspirational. I mean, she was a woman who uh, achieved a universal degree, a Bachelor of Arts, which is quite the achievement, let's be honest, especially considering she was blind and deaf. So yeah, there, lots of good work came from her, but that doesn't mean she's a saint. After all, she was in favour of socialism, because socialism would be so much better to end poverty. Considering the amount of poverty socialism actually caused, I think she was wrong on that one, don't you agree? But if we want to call on other inspirational women, how about Margaret Thatcher? Prime Minister of the UK for quite a while. Now, I'm not completely 100% agreeing with everything she did, but she was known as the Iron Lady for a reason. So, yeah, plenty to be proud of. 
Oh, you know what she thought about feminists? Yeah, I do, and she wasn't in favour of them at all. She kind of felt that um, she achieved what she did despite feminism. So, yeah, feminism isn't in favour of women. It's just in favour of achievements. But I'm not surprised that you would call a trans woman a woman, uh, that you would be in favour of a socialist. So... Maybe, maybe I should just say, yeah, you're right. Whatever, dear. Go on then. Intersectionality. Intersectionality is the connected nature between all social categorizations, such as race, gender, sexuality, nationality, and so on and so forth. Yep, intersectional. Saw it coming, but then again, I guess anyone would. It's kind of funny, though, because intersectional feminism basically defines itself on everything everyone else thinks and they're against it so much so that they're even against other feminists for example the TERFs which is a derogatory term for trans exclusionary radical feminists thinking that trans women aren't the same as biological women is radical it seems yeah I, I, I guess that should say enough about what intersectionality is, don't you? The reality needs to be shaped to fit the narrative. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to go along with that. I mean, sure, why not call yourself whatever you want to call, but that doesn't mean I should, does it? And it's all good and well that you want to place intersectionality into the construct, but it still doesn't prove we need feminism. Intersectional activism is activism which acknowledges that most causes are intertwined. I only learned this word around a year ago, and unless you're involved in some movement or you took some obscure elective in college, the chances are you haven't heard it either. I think a lot of people have heard this word, and um, the vast majority of people may recognise it as bogus. I mean, I have it worse than you, and this is why I have it worse than you. And you have to agree with me, because you don't know how bad I have it, because my lived experience, or, well, I'm of X ethnicity, and therefore I'm more oppressed than people of cisgendered white, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's all excuses. It's based on postmodernist claptrap. And um, I'm, I'm sorry you fell for it but apparently you have. See, the thing is with intersectionality, it's not I am oppressed and it's your fault you need to fix it. No, no, it's I am oppressed, it's your fault you need to fix it and I will not tell you what you did wrong, but I will tell you what you need to do to make it right. And as soon as I start telling you what you did wrong, I have to stay as vague as I can, because otherwise you might prove me wrong. Hmm. Yet still, it does not explain why we need feminism. I think this is quite harmful, because it leads to this idea that all movements are fighting against each other for attention, rather than fighting together towards a common goal. Funny enough, intersectionality is the polarizing factor that will set people against each other, so you cannot fight for a common goal. Or rather, within intersectionality, you're allowed to fight for a common goal as long as it's the common goal considered by the majority of intersectional feminists, which basically is a form of socialism, which is okay, I don't mind, but intersectional feminists turn against gays, feminists, and basically everyone who disagrees with them, I don't have to name them all, do I? I mean, the whole thing about intersectional feminism is listen and believe. And that's not a way forward. It's authoritarianism in small. So, yeah, um, I don't think so. This is not why we need feminism. I personally don't think we do need feminism, but uh, we can do a lot better than following intersectionality. Actually, I would say we need intersectionality out of our society because it's harming women. I believe we see another worrying side effect. 
when certain people are excluded from feminism. Shamefully, trans women are often excluded from feminism by trans exclusionary radical feminists or TERFs. And I never thought I'd agree with a feminist, but in this case, I agree with the TERFs. Because let's be honest, the inclusion of transgender women into female sports is destroying all opportunities. Well, not all, but the vast majority of opportunities for biological women in those sports. And somehow we see this. Every biology person in the world will tell you, yep. Every medical person in the world will tell you, yep. But we're not allowed to see it because intersectionalists are like, no, 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 no. You are a transphobe if you say something like this. And this is how intersectionality hurts women. And here you are pretending that it's a good thing. Because let's be honest, if it hurts women, it hurts everyone, right? Women hold up half the sky and all that. Obviously men hold the other half, but there you go. The most recent example of this being J.K. Rowling's tweet and subsequent essay on why she doesn't view trans women as women. Not only is it ridiculous to exclude a woman from feminism simply because she was assigned male at birth, it is also almost comical that in 2020, there's women being discriminated against. And instead of standing with our sisters, we isolate them further. You know, when you're born, the doctor basically looks at you and it could be a male or a female doctor, let's be honest. And they will notice whether you have certain physical characteristics. Well, let's be honest, a penis or a vagina, simple as that. And if you do, then you're either a boy or a girl because that's your sex. They're not assigning anything. They're merely recognizing what is there. But then again, this is how postmodernism works. Words need to be removed. They have to change their meaning. People don't have to understand that the meaning has changed as long as we can push our narrative. The funny thing is, this is where intersectionality actually hurts women. Women, plural. Because by pushing that trans women are the same as women, they're allowing women to compete in female sports, to name but one of the many things. And biologically speaking, on average, a female cannot compete with a male body. And a transgender may have had surgery to remove parts of his body, but that doesn't then change them into a woman. Their skeleton is definitely male. Their muscle build is definitely male. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but you're basically wanting males to compete with females because it suits your narrative. But it's hurting women. It's hurting society. So how is this helping women? How does feminism, your brand of feminism, help women? Because I'm not seeing it. Feminism started as a movement for all women, but there's this cocky cutter idea of what a feminist is that's perpetuated by pop culture. It's by no means a new phenomenon, but it's something I've only noticed recently. I believe it started when the only great women I learned about were women like Emmeline Pankhurst, white, wealthy, well-educated women who may have fought for women's rights, but fit society standards in every other way. This is the acceptable face of feminism. You really should read up on feminism. Because even when feminism was roaring and young, during the suffrage movement, for example, it didn't talk about all women. It didn't care about all women. It assumed that the women that agree with them were on their side, therefore they are good. But the women that didn't agree with them must have been indoctrinated, can't think for themselves. Feminism has never been for all women. It's been for the ones that agree with them. At the start of this talk, I asked you to think about a woman who inspired you in your life. Now, 
I ask you to take your feminism a step further. I challenge you to find a woman unlike anyone you've ever known. Find her and be inspired by her story. Find her and vow to fight for trans women, women of colour, queer women, disabled women, women working in sweatshops, sex workers. Feminism started as a movement for all women. And it's our job to make sure it remains a movement for all women. I am sorry, my dear, but feminism never was a movement for all women. Feminism excluded a lot of women right from the get-go. Hell, feminism still excludes a lot of women. Intersectional feminists still exclude a lot of women. For example, if you're a woman and you're against abortion, well, obviously you have no right to speak as a woman because how can you not be in favour of abortion? Or indeed, if you're a woman and have a problem with the concept of having to compete in sports against men. I mean, let's be honest, that's not that strange a concept. But intersectionality disagrees with them. And the whole idea of women of colour, yada yada blah blah blah, how are intersectional feminists treating, for example, people like Candace Owen? Now, I'm not a big fan of her, but she is a woman, biologically speaking, and she is of colour, apparently, which means something. But then again, she's also considered an Oreo because she's only black on the outside, but she's white on the inside. Yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. See, that's the thing. Intersectional feminism went one step further than normal feminism. And what did normal feminism do? It started groups. And everyone within the group is good and everyone outside of the group is bad. And intersectional feminism broadened the divide, created more groups. Oh, well, you should be inspired by someone who you've never met before. Yeah, sure, if they did something inspiring, by all means, be inspired. But if they are basically vegetating, why the hell should you be inspired by them? Or if they're basically abusing the system. Look at um, Geneve, the one from... He lives in Canada. I forgot, I forgot his first name, but he now goes through life as Jennifer Geneve, suing everyone left and right because they don't want to uh, have a bikini wax given to his balls because he recognizes he's a woman, but he didn't take the time to have his balls removed. And if you don't want to do that as a woman, you don't want to um, bikini wax his balls, then uh, you'll be charged, because how dare you not consider him a her? Yeah, sure, why not? So which of the people is being threatened in this situation? The person saying that he is a she and therefore should be accepted as a she, or the female worker that doesn't want to wax balls, which I've been told is very different than waxing a vagina. I don't know, I've never done either of them. But to me, there is a trans woman and a woman. And we're supposed to side with the trans woman? Because trans? What does that mean for the biological woman? She isn't woman enough? Feminism doesn't care about her anymore? Well, feminism does, intersectional feminism doesn't. And therein lies the problem. We need feminism as much as a fish needs a bicycle. I love that. Uh, Gloria Steinem once made that one up. Slightly different than me, but I think mine is better. But in all fairness, we need intersectional feminism, like we need a comet on the planet Earth. So, yeah, think about that for a change. Be inspiring. Be inspiring to people, sure. That's a good thing. That's always a good thing. See what you can do to help people. Yep, once again, always a good thing. Do not go into the night when the night is filled with psychopathy. I'm sorry, but if you suffer from whatever delusion, I will not strengthen your delusion. I might not attack you, but I might help you get rid of that delusion. That's not because I hate you, but because I know that living in a delusion is a bad 
thing. Why are you advocating for people, men and women, to strengthen the delusions they live in? Well, because it fits the narrative. And therein you once again prove how incredible, harmful intersectional feminism is. Ah, you won't respond to me. I know you won't. Hell, most feminists won't even talk back to me because how dare I? It's just a wrong thing. Oh, it's just a sea lion or uh, what's the other word they like to use? Uh, gaslighting or yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anything to not go into the conversation. Funny enough, that's why you're polarizing. Because you shout some things and then when people disagree with you, you shout expletives well maybe you wouldn't shout them but still and this is also where i will end because uh, like share and subscribe if you feel so inclined but more to the point criticism is always welcome i really want to hear what you guys think or you girls let's be honest guys as a combining term uh, what do i care anyway i do look forward to your criticism and i do hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.